in the 1990s, BMW built a flagship coupe called the 8 Series. Now the 8 Series has returned, but back in the 90s, there was never a convertible version and there was never an M version. That all changes this year for 2020 with this, the all new 2020 M8 convertible or Mate as I've been calling it. We are going to get to drive this. This is a regular M8 and we're also going to drive an M8 competition coupe. So for the first time ever, BMW has started breaking up and dividing their M models. So you have a regular M model, the M8 in this case, which is more suited for the street. And then you have the competition model, which is a little more hard edged and better for the track. So let's go ahead and get this convertible model out on the road to see how it handles. And then we'll get in an M8 coupe to see how that handles on the racetrack. But before we do, be sure to click the link in the description below to get the best deals on the BMW 8 series and other vehicles like it over at carbuzz.com. All right, here we go. Let's give it a little beans. Oh, there it is. Ooh. Ooh. All right, off to a good start in the mate. So again, driving the convertible model, you just get to hear the exhaust a lot more and it is a really good exhaust. Uh, this is BMW's 4.4 liter twin turbocharged V8. It either makes 600 horsepower, which is what we're driving now in the standard M8, but if you get the competition model, you're gonna get 617 horsepower. So just a little bit more and you do get a lot of other differences in the suspension, the differential, the exhaust is gonna be different. So you are gonna get a lot of uh, extra stuff on the competition model. Now we're gonna take the competition coupe out on the track, but for driving out on the road, I was expecting this M8 convertible to be a little bit stiff and I have it in its sportiest setting right now and it just really doesn't feel all that stiff. The gauges all change as I do that, but now I just put it back into its road mode and it quiets down real nicely. The seats are not quite as comfortable as you get on the standard eight series. They are a little bit more bolstered, but they still have heating and ventilation. So BMW has not sacrificed too greatly on comfort here here on this car. This is still one of the most comfortable M cars money can buy. And even in its regular mode, oh yeah, that's definitely a lot louder than the standard eight series. Now I've driven the M850 i coupe, which sits below this. And that car makes just kind of like a low burble. This car makes a loud roar and it really oh, cracks when you go for a shift. So I think that because this car is so fast, I'm gonna be able to tell you a lot more about it once we get it out on the track because this is just too much performance to really take advantage of on the road. If you're gonna get the convertible, I think you're better off not getting the competition because all of that track stuff's not really gonna help you. You're probably not gonna take your convertible out on the racetrack, which is why we are going to be switching to an M8 with a roof. All right, so we are on the racetrack in the M8 coupe competition. This one's got 700 and 617 horsepower, sorry. It'll do zero to 60 in about three seconds, although I have a feeling it's gonna rip off a little quicker than that. Compared to the convertible we just drove, this definitely feels like it has a little bit less weight. You definitely can't hear the exhaust quite as well though. So if you just like to show off with the exhaust, the convertible might be a little bit better, but if you want to be better on the racetrack, it's going to be this one. We have these two M buttons, M1 and M2. They're nice bright and red on the steering wheel. So you're not going to miss them. You can use those to customize your settings. We have it in MDM mode. Uh, that's manual shift mode really aggressive on the traction control system. It's gonna allow a lot of slide. This is an all-wheel drive vehicle, but I'm going through a sweeper here. Oh yeah, I was able to kick the ass out really nice there, but since it's still in all-wheel drive mode, I was able to catch it so beautifully well with the steering. 
So you're gonna be faster in all-wheel drive mode. If you wanna get crazy, you can turn the traction control fully off, turns this into a fully rear-wheel drive car. The M differential will let you send 100% of the power to the rear for some crazy, ridiculous slides through the S's. This is not a light car, but the all-wheel drive helps it get around those turns easy, and this engine is a delight. I've been manually shifting it. Um, I wish the paddles were a little bit bigger. Some of the old M cars used to have bigger paddle shifters than these, so that is not my favorite, but the steering wheel itself is fantastic. The seats hold you in really nicely without being super uncomfortable out on the road. The M8, is actually a track weapon despite being really comfortable out on the road. Pricing for the BMW M8 goes as follows. So for the coupe, it's $133,000, or if you want the competition, that's $146,000. That's a lot of money, but you do get 17 extra horsepower and a lot of extra tuning. The convertible is more expensive, $142,500 for the regular M8 and $155,500 for the convertible. Now, in my opinion, of the two, I would say you're better off going with the coupe. I just like the looks of it a little bit better and it's less expensive. If you're never going to track it, just go for the standard one, but I would forego all of these cars and wait for the M8 Grand Coupe. That's going to be the least expensive of the three and I think it's the best looking and it also offers the best practicality.